Hi, I'm Adrian and welcome to this week's Connected. Today I have an amazing opportunity to talk to Dr. Boller about the Building Safety Act, its implications for the construction industry and our work on competence frameworks, but also to explore what else CITB can do to support this important agenda in transforming the safety of the industry. The Building Safety Act is obviously uh, going to have a significant impact on the skills and the competence of the industry. How prepared do you think industry generally is for the Act? We're a million miles away from where we need to be. We literally at the beginning of a process that should have begun years ago. Well, there's a lot of work that, that as you know, we've started and we're supporting others on with the competence frameworks. Um, they, they tend to be a little bit uh, hidden from employers. The real things are the skills and the training things that we need to put in place to to help people to build those competencies. But I think the the challenge for for us goes beyond creating the training and is actually changing the motivations and the attitudes of, of the industry uh, to safety um, and how we drive a greater appetite within industry to achieve competence. Um, I don't know whether, whether you've got any insights on that. You know, the Building Safety Act talks about legal compliance. Um, my concern is clients aren't ready. Many don't understand their new obligation and many still think they can delegate their way out. So there's lots of resource out there already about building safety, golden thread. But our challenge is culture. How do we start inspiring that change? We need to start boldly sharing our perspective, sharing our knowledge, but we have to make it about the person. And I think that's where CITB can start to map that journey. I'm not phased by the fact that we need to start helping people learn. Is there an understanding that we all have to upskill? Some, in fact, many still think it's got nothing to do with them, largely because we're talking about high-rise residential buildings. The principle of the Building Safety Act will apply to every project, right? So you'd be looking, you'd be hoping to see a change in industry adopting competence themselves uh, more as a as a direction of travel for them, rather than just a regulated world. You know, I say that as a as a charter surveyor, we have twenty hours per annum CPD we have to do. I want to help. CITB introduce that culture into the sector. Just just on the subject of, of the motivation of clients, which is clearly an issue, what, what do you think CITB or others can do to try and uh, drive that change of behavior in client? The client is the most important person, but some clients still think they can delegate this obligation. So CITB have a, and others have a role to play around educating stakeholders generally. From a client perspective, I think there's just a lot of denial. That motivation, it's got to be storytelling. You know, who is leading that conversation at the moment? Who is the... It should be agencies like CITV. It should be professional bodies like CIC, CLC, RICS, REBA, ICE. Many still don't understand the criticality of what this legislation really means, right? So sharing stories, providing access to case studies should be what's happening. I'm disappointed because it's just happening at such a slow rate. So that, that's the backdrop to a need for quite significant change in the industry. The whole principle here about competence at an individual level surely needs to drive a change in the way that competence is managed. Currently, the industry works very much on the basis that you get a qualification and it's for life. Is this about individuals, employers, clients, everybody starting to recognise that competence and skills constantly need changing and being updated? Absolutely. You know, the CSCS card is a great instrument, a great tool a great product to have some get their CSCS card for five years that's it i'm good no more required that whole culture has to change it has to become an, an annual requirement improvement and sustainable competency so I'm, I'm a big fan of this competency piece because as a surveyor i have to evidence my competency every year so if i have to do that then in a post building safety act environment everybody should be required to demonstrate or evidence continuous improvement and understanding of what this piece of legislation is trying to do. You need to take the conversation to various audiences, one of which is the tradesman or woman. And that, to me, that is the most important audience because at site level, that's where the success or failure will happen. As a QS, I'm making it relevant to payment. It helps contextualize my ask. So as a QS, I need to evidence what you have done as an electrician, what you've done as a painter and tiler, what you've done as a business. And I need real clarity on exactly what you've done, why you've done what you've done, what products you used, so that I can take that data and evidence, put it in evaluation and get you paid within 30 days. And that is how I'm framing the fact that they need to recognize how they collect their data 
share their data and validate that data. And that's a really simple conversation to have a site level. And that's what the Golden Thread's about. That's how we need to articulate this ask. It's not about throwing legislation. It's not about telling them to go and do the heavy lift. It's about making it relevant to them in a timely way. You know, many do not have the time to go and research these things. You know, time is really, really precious at site level. A, a lot of the conversation is about skills and you yourself said that, it, that this isn't about technology. But do you think the digital agenda has a role to play here at all? It's going to be disruptive. It's going to redefine the way that business have to operate. And young people have a real role to play. That's why I'm excited. But the digital agenda generally, it sounds difficult. It sounds expensive. If I said that we should no longer have paper drawings on site, that's an improvement towards the digital agenda. But can you imagine a construction site with no paper drawings? Not at the moment. We need to get there. A construction site with no paper drawings is almost unheard of, but we need to get there. Because I can tell you that the changes in those drawings happening at a digital level are not captured in your paper drawing. So is the contractor working with the current set of information? And another example of the skills that people need constantly changing. Yeah. Um, you, you also talked about golden thread. Um, can you just explain a little bit more about what you mean by the golden thread? There is no one way to describe it, generally. But for me, the golden thread is, a, is an evidence-based, chronological, digital footprint of how you have designed a building, built the building, and pushed it into operation. And it captures everything. Every decision, every product used, everyone involved, the time it took. The golden thread is your, is your digital footprint of how you delivered this asset, essentially. Its purpose in the form of a digital twin is to allow a third party, in this case, the building safety regulator, to look at what you've done and say that at gateway one, we gave you permission to build X. At gateway three, we now have to give a certificate of occupation and that gateway three is dependent upon us looking as to whether you actually built what you were permitted to build. So that's what I call the one-to-one -one ratio. Generally, we get permission to build a 10-story asset. We finish building it, but when you look at what we built, there's a design gap because some things have slipped, some things have got through, some things aren't quite right. That golden thread may not get you the certificate at gateway three. So you need to build one-to-one -one ratio now. And the best way to capture that one-to-one -one ratio is in a digital twin. So for me, the golden thread is about accuracy, transparency, accountability of what you were permitted to do. It's about accountability. Did you build what you were permitted to build? And is what you built safe to occupy? And then what happens beyond occupation? Because Building Safety Act doesn't stop at the point that the building's occupied. So that, that must have a big impact on the skills for the people who are maintaining the buildings. I think, I think you know, therein lies the challenge because the building safety case, that is what is produced to provide to the building safety regulator, the building safety case potentially has to be reviewed every five years. So that building safety case on day one, if anything changes in that asset over the five-year period, it has to be captured in the report in a digital format. So that's the extension of your golden thread beyond Gateway 3. To maintain that asset in a digital environment requires new skills. Whether you're an architect, engineer, contractor, your facilities management teams, mm -hmm. they need to upskill now. Are they competent to recognize that, for example, you want to refurbish a room, they have to take before and after photos, capture exactly what was done, what was installed. They need to reflect that in the models. And guess what? If they've introduced new risks as a consequence of that work, even the insurance companies need to recognize. So the capturing and sharing of information is the skill that's required by everybody. So everybody's a data manager now, in addition to what they were doing before, but it's not a new part of the role. Do, do you see this as a driving force for a change along the lines of the skills you just talked about into the wider industry, so it's beyond regulation into just being good practice and the way the industry works? Yeah, that's the vision I'm trying to figure out right now. We're struggling to do this for high-rise residential buildings. We're struggling. And most of those buildings are existing assets. So they're slightly more challenging around figuring out what is there at the moment. For new buildings, it's easy. There is no reason why the digital skill sets required to deliver new stuff aren't there already. The challenge is legacy assets, as I call them. We, are, we just don't have the technical toolkit to do that well. This is probably the first challenge I've seen that is not geared towards seniority. So whether you are a CEO, COO, CFO, mid-manager, graduate, we all have the same baseline. We all need to figure out how we evolve from our current position into a position where we share data really well. Yeah. We manage data in a, in a collaborative and interoperable way. And it's a language, but it's a cultural change. So the quality of work becomes a, a much more critical aspect. Quality and competence in delivering quality is now so important. Quality was always a key deliverable. 
time, cost and quality. Quality piece has always been important. We just allowed things to get done in a slightly different way yeah. and still be certified as good or practically complete. Now we have to prove that what we've done was not only right and fit and proper, but if the regulator asked the question, how did you do it? And were you competent enough to do it? And can you show me that you're competent? That's where there's a little bit of pushback now, because all of a sudden we have to be accountable. We have to step up. But I'm just nervous that culturally we're not here. The way you use the word evolution here, and I think perhaps for, for colleagues at CITB who who will be listening to the conversation, reconciling it with the things we're doing, I think that might be easy to see some components of that. So we are doing work on the competence framework. So that starts to work with industry to put some of those yeah. foundational pieces in place. You'll start to put some suitable training assessment in place. And you've talked about the CSCS card and we can do some work with what are the other opportunities that CITB has to help that transition? You know, I think, and I've said this to many, CITB need to show leadership boldly to step into this space. We're tiptoeing around some of the obvious stuff. That bold leadership, I think number one, that's CITB's role. Number two, plain language. We need to demystify no acronyms. Plain language easily understood bite-sized chunks. Learn as you have time to learn. At the academy, we're offering macro credentials, bite-sized chunks of learning. The whole way we learn has changed. The pandemic has positively disrupted a whole rake of traditional norms. And I think there's a real opportunity for CITB to reinvent how CITB lady payers and their people learn. We need to be having more of this yeah. at site level. I'm, I'm even thinking about toolbox talks on digital. That's right. We're doing toolbox talks on health and safety. We need a toolbox talk on digital. We need a toolbox talk on the golden thread, for example. But to do that, site managers need to get right together. But I'm excited because it's no longer an option. It has to happen. Someone has to leave. Well, I was going to ask, what, what would your fears be for the, for the industry if, if industry doesn't grasp this nettle? You know, I get asked a question by some clients who said to me, Bono, what is the true cost of compliance with the Building Safety Act? And I looked at them because there were three or four of them in the room and I said, 72 lives. The true cost of compliance with building safety are the 72 lives that have already been mm -hmm. taken. That's the true cost. The actual cost is whatever you determine is the cost for you to upskill your team. And that's a paper cost. That's a paper value. But the true cost are the people that are no longer here. The sector has to change. I'm excited because I know that things will change. My concern is how long it's taken to tangibly have a senior level all the way down to operational level. And seven years in, I'm just not convinced we're going to get. And three million people in our sector, Adrian, that have to figure out what digital means to them. So I'm hearing some of the things that, that will underpin this transformation. One is CITB recognizing the way we, we deliver our product and services that actually the way that people need to consume be more flexible more modular all those kind of things yeah and that starts with the competence frameworks obviously the thing we've been talking about has come from quite a terrible place to start off with what happened at Grenfell but looking forward do you think these transition that needs to happen is also the key to achieving more positive change in in that regard too we talk about achieving net zero by 2050 80 percent of those buildings are already here where well, you're going to need data-driven solutions akin to digital twins, right? Because we need to measure that carbon piece in real time. Every building has to have its own footprint and that footprint can only be really measured in the right granularity with a digital twin. So if you do the heavy lift required to comply on the building safety, you can pivot very quickly into decarbonization. So one feeds the other. And I think that's why we have no choice, right? If we're going to get this planet into a better place, we've got to think about decarbonization of existing legacy assets, and that's largely what the Building Safety Act is forcing us to do. So, you know, they're all related. It's not rocket science, really, but there's a there's an upskilling piece required. And a, and a change of pace, by the sounds of it. 2050 is only about 25 years away, so we need to pick up the pace. When I think about what we have achieved in seven years in the UK, it's, co it's completely disproportionate. The amount of effort that's gone into it by some of us versus where we are today is disproportionate. The level of understanding with the resources, with the training and the upskilling piece, with the conversations, and by getting young people into that conversation, it will expedite. So I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that within five to 10 years, we'll have a different landscape in the UK. Question is, will we still be relatively a first or second mover in a global perspective? Because where will the UK be from a competitive advantage in five to 10 years? Will we still be number one or two? We may drop to three or four, maybe five. But the digital unlocks all of this stuff. It's been great talking to you, Bola. I, I, the conversation's gone a bit further than I thought. I think uh, Building Safety Act, you've opened my eyes a little bit. Not only is it the things that I would have connected with it, like the competence frameworks and the modular training and things that we're doing, 
but also we started to get into productivity, uh, into net zero, into actually attracting the right people in for the future. So uh, it's been a conversation I'm sure we'll carry on having. Having You are an ambassador. Uh, it's great to have, have had you here to talk to people today. So thank you very much. Awesome. Appreciate that.